At ease, Guardians. Welcome to Tales of the Frontier. As always, I will be using a system for determining the certainty of a theory. The system is in short as follows and is detailed in the description below. It ranges from speculation to possible to probable to likely and to confirmed. My name is Captain Kex and this is the Flameric Crest story. We did not create the Philosopher's Stone. It appeared to us in the skies over Mars, as of then two robes. This warlock set was the PS4 exclusive addition to the Taken King, and this is where we start our theory. It would take us on a journey that includes Thanatonauts, the Speaker, Osiris and real live alchemy. But let's start with this item. Now the name, Asoth, is highly interesting and connects to what is in the item description. Asoth is believed to be the essential agent of transformation in alchemy. It's a name given by ancient alchemists to Mercury, the animating spirit hidden in all matter that makes transformation or transmutation possible. The word comes from the Arabic Al-Zabug, which means Mercury. The word occurs in the writings of many early alchemists. So Asoth connects directly to the Philosopher's Stone, a mythical object. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about that. The Philosopher's Stone, or Stone of the Philosophers, is a legendary substance capable of turning base metals such as mercury into gold or silver. It is also called the Elixir of Life, useful for rejuvenation and for achieving immortality. For many centuries it was the most sought after goal in alchemy. The Philosopher's Stone was the central symbol of the mystical terminology of alchemy, symbolizing perfection at its finest, enlightenment and heavenly bliss. So there's a clear theme here. Now before I start I should point out that I will not go crazy in depth with alchemy and its connections to life forces and light, so you'll have to do that rabbit hole for yourself. So let's get back to topic. So the robe of the acid bend calls the traveler that we found over the skies on Mars, the Philosopher's Stone, an ancient myth of an item said to have created the elixir of life, granting eternal life. Sound familiar? The theme here fits very well with the myth of the stone. The traveler grants us immortality or the light of the traveler. And that Asoth would in my mind represent light that we bend to our will. The animating spirit hidden in all matter, which is light. It's a very probable reference to light to me and it does not stop there. If we look at the boots of the Asoth bend, it says, Warlocks trace their cultural roots back to the alchemists of the ancient world. This item further strengthens the connection to ancient alchemy. So let's continue on our journey. This is the Flamel Crest. It reads, anything can be anything else, if only you will it so. Now Flamel, as in Nicholas Flamel, is a very interesting name. Nicholas Flamel lived in the 1300s and was a successful French scribe and manuscript seller in Paris. After his death, Flamel developed a reputation as an alchemist, believed to have discovered the Philosopher's Stone and achieved immortality. These legendary accounts first appeared in the 17th century. So Nicholas Flamel is rumored to have discovered the Philosopher's Stone and achieving immortality, which is kind of weird since he died, but anyway. Now, going by the logic that the stone is the traveler, it's interesting that the crest should have the symbol in the center that it has. We will return to that symbol in just a bit. Now, Flamel was then an alchemist, and this leads us to another interesting connection, the alchemist raiment. The alchemist raiment reads, to reshape the world piece by piece, thought by thought. All it takes is a little reshuffling of particles. This item description is very similar to another acid band item, the gloves. It reads, warlocks can reshuffle the substance atomic particles with a wave of their hand. So, all these items are warlock items, suggesting that they are to be viewed as alchemists. Now, look at the symbol in the middle of the alchemist raiment, or even clearer on the Thanatodas lullaby, which reads, makes the passage that much easier. See that symbol? Now, let's put Ulantan's burial ring beside it. Notice that the pattern matches of that of the Thanatodon items. Ulanthan's teaching is that light is everywhere and connects time and space. 
Again, much like Azoth in Alchemy. Now, let's go back to that symbol in the middle of the Flamer Crests. Six points around a center point. This mark can be found on the banner hanging inside the Traveler's Observatory, where the speaker is. So the mark of the speaker, or the banner by the speaker, is the same symbol that it's inside the Flamel Crests, who incidentally found the Philosopher's Stone and achieved immortality. The implications at this point are many, but one I would like to entertain as speculation is the connection to the first team who found the Traveler, Captain Jacob Hardy and his crew. Could it be that... Uh, no, let's not go there. But. There is more, because that symbol can be found at two other locations as well. It's the same banner that can be found behind Brown Vance in the reef, and even in the lighthouse itself. So what then could this symbol mean? It's clearly a symbol that connects to the Traveler, one that both Osiris and the Speaker share. Remember that Osiris was once the disciple of the Speaker. Also an interesting connection is Asoth, that stands for Mercury, the same planet that Osiris travels to and is deeply connected to, and the houses the lighthouse. And it also connects back to the Philosopher's Stone and to alchemy and, finally, to the Traveler and Light. There's one more interesting connection I want to bring up, and it is in the Ghost Fragment's Ghost. Beyond. It is a place, a place casting shadows and emotion. It is a real place, I know. One hot blue sun, say, and other suns too. Five? I like seven better. What I'm recalling is a giant star with a family of six smaller suns, and you could spend days and night counting all of the planets circling those suns. Except there are no planets. Not anymore. The powers at charge have carved up all the worlds, and maybe a brown dwarf or two for good measure. With that rubble, they fashioned topologically creative enclosure, a twisting of space and time sealed behind doors that admit only those who know the magic words. The bones of a hundred planets have been cut smooth and laid like a floor, polished and a lovely floor creating vast living spaces. A floor bigger than 10,000 worlds catching the fierce glow of the seven suns, for light, for food, for beauty, and nothing escapes. Not heat, not gravity, not even the faintest proud sound. It could be anywhere. It can live in the cold between galaxies, or folded up inside matter, near enough to touch right now. I remember it, and maybe it's exactly as I describe it. Seven suns wrapped inside magic. Or it's something else entirely, perhaps. A place still fat with life. An abundance of sentient souls, some decent, maybe few or lesser quality, and everybody stands around or floats about, or they bounce between dimensions. The point is that the residents of the hidden realm live inside a bottle, so perfectly hidden that they can't see beyond their own borders, which shapes a mind in a very specific way. But beyond is their name for a mysterious, doubtful realm that they can't see, which is us, of course. Seven suns, one giant star with a family of six smaller suns. That does sound like a possible description of that mark, doesn't it? It's also a fitting connection to make, with the ghost and their connection to the Traveler. So could it be this mysterious mark, and that it is a representation of what's described here? The source of light, could it be inside the Traveler? My mind is racing with theories right now. Perhaps are these connections only the reason why, or the inspiration for the story and the theme of light and the Traveler? that some clever writer at Bungie found a fitting reference for the universe of destiny and applied it. But I can't help to wonder what possibilities are hidden in this connection. What could we learn or try to understand about alchemy that could help us better understand the world of destiny and the story to come? And how literally should we take these references? Whatever connection is an interesting one, but be wary, don't take them for fact. So when you look up into the night sky and gaze upon the silent silver sphere in the sky, think of Azoth and the life force flowing through it. Treasure the light, guardians. We might lose it sooner than you think. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Please show some support if you want me to continue making this kind of content. I'm sure you will find good ways to do that. Dismissed, guardians.